Hi there! In the previous lesson, we talked about the levels of biological organization. In this video, we will discuss about the first level of biological organization, which is the cell. By the way, if you still haven't watched the previous lesson, you can pause this video and watch that one first to better understand our lesson today. We learned that a microscope enables us to see small things because of its ability to magnify. The first person to observe cells as microscopic structures was the British scientist Robert Hooke. In fact, he was the person who gave cells their name. When Robert Hooke carefully examined a very thin slice of cork, he thought the close-up view resembled small empty rooms. He referred to these tiny rooms as cells from the Latin word cellulae, which means small rooms. A cell is made up of tiny organs called organelles that perform specific functions. They are called organelles because they are like little organs that have its own function. From what we discussed in the previous video, we learned that the cell is the basic unit of life. There are two kinds of cells the plant cell, and the animal cell. We will be differentiating both types of cells, but for now, let's talk about its parts and functions first. While cells differ in size and shape, most of them have common structures. The cells of animals, plants, and related organisms have three basic structures. The cell membrane, nucleus, and cytoplasm. The cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane, encapsulates the contents of the cell. It is like a fence or acts as a gatekeeper to protect the cell from the outside environment. It also controls what materials can go in and out of the cell. The cell membrane is made up of two layers of phospholipids or phospholipid bilayer. The nucleus houses deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA for short, which is the hereditary material that carries genetic instructions in all living things. It also houses various proteins and the nucleolus. It is considered as the brain of the cell because it directs all the activities of the cell. The cytoplasm is where all the organelles are located and has a jelly-like fluid. It is the material between the cell membrane and the nucleus. Alright, so let's move on to the organelles. The first organelle we're going to discuss is the mitochondrion, or mitochondria in plural form. It is one of the largest organelles within a cell. It is also known as the powerhouse of the cell, since it is where the energy of the cell the adenosine triphosphate, or ATP for short, is produced. Next, we have the ribosomes. Ribosomes are tiny organelles like dots that contain ribonucleic acid, or RNA, and specific proteins within the cytoplasm. Within the cell, ribosomes are directly involved in the manufacture of proteins. Another organelle is the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short. There are two types of ER, the smooth ER and the rough ER. The smooth ER is named so because it lacks ribosomes in its surface. However, the rough ER is the opposite. Since the rough ER has ribosomes, it is involved in the manufacture of proteins in the cell. The rough ER also helps in the transportation of proteins. On the other hand, the smooth ER is involved in the synthesis of lipids, like phospholipids, which are used to build the cell membrane. Other functions of the smooth ER include metabolism of carbohydrates, enzyme production in the liver, and contraction of muscle cells in the muscles. Another organelle is the Golgi apparatus. It is responsible for transporting, 
modifying, and packaging proteins and lipids into vesicles for delivery to targeted destinations. It is located in the cytoplasm, next to the endoplasmic reticulum, and near the cell nucleus. While many types of cells contain only one or several Golgi apparatus, plant cells can contain hundreds. Did you know that cells also produce waste? In the cytoplasm, structures called lysosomes contain chemicals that digest waste and worn out or damaged cell parts. Lysosomes act as the waste disposal system of the cell by digesting obsolete or unused materials in the cytoplasm. Thus, lysosomes are also called suicidal bags of the cell. Lastly, we have the vacuole. A vacuole may be described as a space inside a cell that does not contain cytoplasm. It is surrounded by a membrane and filled with fluid. Vacuoles store various molecules including enzymes, waste products of the cell, water, and even food material depending on the type of cell. Both plant and animal cells contain membrane-bound organelles like the nucleus and mitochondria. However, plant cells and animal cells do not look exactly the same or have all of the same organelles since each of them have different needs. So, how are plant and animal cells similar or different? Why do plant and animal cells have differences? Plant and animal cells differ because they have to perform different functions. Both animal and plant cells have mitochondria, but only plant cells have chloroplast. Plants don't get their sugar from eating food, so they need to make sugar with the help of the sunlight. This process, known as photosynthesis, takes place in the chloroplast. Once the sugar is made, it is then broken down by the mitochondria to make energy for the cell. Because animals get sugar from the food they eat, they do not need chloroplast, just mitochondria. Both plant and animal cells have vacuoles. A plant cell contains a large singular vacuole that is used for storage and maintaining the shape of the cell. In contrast, Animal cells have many smaller vacuoles. Not seen in this illustration is the vacuole of the animal cell. Both plant and animal cells have a cell membrane, but only plant cells have a cell wall. In plant cells, the cell wall surrounds the cell membrane. This gives the plant cell its box-like shape. This also allows plants to remain strong and stand upright even if they grow to great heights. Lysosomes are found in nearly every animal cell. They are common in animal cells because when animal cells take in or absorb food, they need the enzymes found in lysosomes to digest and use the food for energy. On the other hand, lysosomes are not commonly found in plant cells. Lysosomes are not needed in plant cells because they have cell walls that are tough enough to keep large or foreign substances that lysosomes would usually digest out of the cell. Lastly, we have the centrosome. The centrosome is a microtubule organizing center found near the nuclei of animal cells. It contains a pair of centrioles two structures that lie perpendicular to each other. The centrosome replicates itself before a cell divides, and the centrioles appear to have some role in pulling the duplicated chromosomes to opposite ends of the dividing cell. However, the exact function of the centrioles in cell division isn't clear, because cells that have had the centrosome removed can still divide, and plant cells which lack centrosomes, are capable of cell division. Alright, as a recap, here are all the organelles that we talked about. The three basic components of the cell are the cell membrane, nucleus, and cytoplasm. Within the cytoplasm are the organelles which are the mitochondria, ribosomes, 
smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, and not seen in the illustration of the animal cell, is the vacuole. Those are the very basic organelles of the cell. Now here is a table comparing the structures found in the plant and animal cell. Plant cells have a large singular vacuole, while animal cells have many smaller vacuoles. Plant cells have chloroplasts in a cell wall, while animal cells don't. Lysosomes are rarely present in plant cells, but are present in almost every animal cell. And lastly, animal cells have a centrosome, while plant cells do not. Alright, that's all for now. We will be talking about sexual and asexual reproduction in our next lesson. See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.